to start it, this unit on material science, we go first after what choices do we have and what material and how to classify them. Uh, the structure and the property of something can yield into suitable application for, for the purpose that somebody has in mind. For example, if you want to have a crucible, the question is what properties should this crucible have? And some of the choices are here. Should it have high melting point or low melting point? Definitely we want it to have high melting point. You want to be able to um, melt something ionic or metallic in it. Should it be permeable to moisture or not? Definitely not. So we don't want it to be uh, perme uh, permeable to moisture. You don't want uh, water to come in. Rather, we want to evaporate it out. Uh, should it have highly highly structured or loose packing structure? Definitely, we want it to be highly structured. We don't want it to become amorphous and melt away. Uh, now, the last thing, would you like it to be made out of uh, plastic? Definitely not. Metallic? Not, because its melting point could be lower than what we're trying to, to cook in it or react in it. So ceramic is a fine choice, but then ceramic becomes brittle and it will shatter once it's dropped even a few inches from the table. Now let's just go after classification based on bonding. And these are our choices. Um, you have metallic substances, then you should know what properties it has. It has metallic bonding, therefore it's strong, malleable, and good conductor of heat and electricity. Uh, you have ceramics, I highlighted it in, in blue because this might be new to you guys as what is the material. Traditionally, it's known as inorganic non-metallic solids formed between metal and non-metals. So they have some ionic bonding and ionic nature into them. Therefore, definitely they're crystalline in structure, they're solids, and they are brittle. So they have ionic ceramic. And examples are a few that I laid out here. Polymers, you are used to it. Uh, they are members of a carbon family. They are covalently bonded rather than ionic for ceramic. They are long chain molecules, also known as plastics. They tend to be resistant to chemical reactions and they're good insulators of heat and electricity and they're definitely lighter than ceramic. So choices of mat matter goes after their properties. Uh, composite is something new, so I also highlighted that in blue. It's a mixture of two distinct phases. Now each phase retains its own property, but once you have a composite, it will have a brand new property. Example is a fiberglass. Um, on fiberglass, I want to elaborate and say it is a reinforced phase it embedded into a matrix phase. So if you look here, this is a fiber and it's a mesh like this. And what, what you do is you're going to take this bundle, which is a mixture of polymer, and you're going to apply it on it. And then it will be reinforced. And then you will have stronger material, material that has brand new properties. It's not uh, capable to be turned and wear just like your pure mesh. And if you have bundle on piece of paper, it's going to sort of fall off that, but here it's going to be embedded in it, so it's very strongly held. And then you can use it for other purposes. So composite example is fiberglass, and one definition is reinforced phase embedded into a matrix phase. Matrix is a mesh-like. 